11.9, solving probability problems by using combination. So now that we know how to use combinations and finding them, let's determine probability based off combinations, which we haven't done yet. So committee of three women. A club consists of four men and five women. Three members are to be selected at random to form a committee. What is the probability that the committee will consist of three women? So we want to know the probability of three women. That's what we're that's what it's asking for. So that's always good. Now, how we find that using combinations? How do we find that using combinations? So isn't probability always the possible versus the total? So your top is the number of possible committees or a possible committee with three women. Because that's that's what you want. That's what we're trying to find. And then isn't the bottom always the total? So in this case, because we're using combination, it's going to be the total of the three member committees. So we have to find the combination of the possible three women committees, and then what's the total of all just three member committees together, whether they be female or male, what's going to be the combination for that? So first, let's find the combination of just the possible women. So out of total, we have five women. And we're selecting three of them. So if we set that up in a combination, we'll have 5C3. We're just going to leave it there for a second. We know what that means. We know we have to plug that into a formula, but we'll do that in a second. Now the bottom. That's the total of all three committees. So that's the total of every type of three member. So total, the total amount of people we have are nine. Five plus four is nine. So we total have nine people. And we're selecting three. So our combination formula will be 9C3. And from here, we're just going to simplify. So when you're trying to find probability of combinations, it's always what you want over the total of what, you're, what you can have. So since we want to know the probability of three women, that's why the women are on top. We have five women. We're picking three. And on the bottom, it's the total of everybody. So we're only picking three people out of nine. Now we're going to set this up into our combination formula. So our combination formula up on top up on top we'll have five factorial over five minus three factorial, three factorial. And on the bottom, we'll have 9 factorial over 9 minus 3 factorial, 3 factorial. You know how to work with factorials and combination formulas. So for the top, we get 10. And for the bottom, we get 84. Now, those are both even, so I'm going to divide by 2. And when we do, we get 5 over 42. 5 and 42 can't have, uh, they can't simplify. There's nothing in common. So the probability of three women are 5 out of 42. Example 2, a heart flush. A flush in the game of poker is five cards of the same unit. So it's like five hearts in your hand, five diamonds, five spades, or five clubs. You have five cards and they all match the same symbol. 
If you are dealt a five card hand, determine the probability that you will be dealt a heart flush. So we want to know what's the probability of getting five hearts in your hand, because that's what a heart flush is. So five hearts, that's what we want to know. Very rare. That's such a rare hand to get. So on top is always what we want. So what we want is what's the possibility of a five heart flush? So the top is what exactly what we're looking for. What's the possibility of a five heart flush? And then the bottom is always the total. So what is the total of any five card flush? Not just hearts, but any of them. So now we want to know what's the probability of any number of possible flushes. So it's always the top is what you want. The bottom is always the total of what you can do. So for the top, we want to know the probability or the combination of five hearts. So in a deck of cards, there are 13 hearts and we need five of them. So our combination for our top is going to be 13C5. Now on the bottom, that's the number of any possible flushes. So any flush, so total in the entire deck not just the hearts, but the entire deck, we have 52 cards. And out of those, we, need f we have five in our hand. So five, that's how much we're picking. So our combination for that is 52 C five. So let's write, let's write out our actual combination formula for our numerator. We're gonna have 13, 13 minus 5, and 5. Of course, all factorials. And on the bottom, we have 52, 52 minus 5, and 5. See why it's important to have the calculator for this? You don't need it, but it, it's going to be a pain to do 50 times. 52 times uh, 51 times 50 times 49 times 48 all the way down. So 13 factorial, 13 minus 5 factorial, 5 factorial. When you put that into your handy dandy calculator, you get 33. 52 factorial, 52 minus 5 factorial, 5 factorial. When you plug that into your calculator, you get 66,640. Now, can we simplify this? Think about the number 33. Think about it for a second. What's the only thing divisible by 33? 11 and 3, right? Because it's, a, it's the same number, same number. So we know it's divisible by 3 and 11. Nothing else. So how do we check to see if it's even divisible by anything? Well, they're not even... So I don't think that we can simplify. And that's true. That's what I'm, I'm trying to go through the process of your brain. You're right. We cannot simplify this. But what does that really mean to us? Well, if you plug this into your calculator, you plug this into your calculator, this is what you're going to get. So if you plug that into your calculator, you're going to get this weird looking thing that says 4.95198079 e negative 4. So what that means is move your decimal to the left four times. So 
So if we move the decimal left uh, four times, that's one, two, three. And we need three zeros. So if we wrote this in decimal form, it would be approximately 0 0.00. 0, 0.0045198079.2, which we can say is 0 0.000. Let's round it at 495. Let's stop there. So what that is saying is to get a, if you had a deck of cards and you're playing poker, and you want a five heart flush, if you want a heart flush, it's almost impossible. In percentage, it's 0.05%. Less than 1%, half of a percentage of a time, you're going to get a five card flush that are all hearts. That's what we just found. Example 3. Streaming queue selection. Hermes has shows in their queue they want to watch. They have four iCarly episodes, five Orville episodes, and three Toast of London episodes in their queue. If Hermes presses the shuffle button, determine probability that no iCarly episodes are selected, at least one iCarly episode is selected, and two iCarly episodes and two Orville episodes are selected. All right, so we have three parts to this question. The first part is the probability of no iCarly. So order doesn't matter here. It just doesn't want iCarly. So it, I don't care what we pick. It just, I don't want to watch that show. I just, I, I'm going to press the shuffle button, but I don't want that to come on. So for our combination, it's going to be number of possible not iCarlys, because that's our goal. over how many possible you actually have. So for our numerator, we need to figure out how many are we picking and what's the total. So not I Carly. Let's see how many episodes are not I Carly. Five Orville and three Toast of London. So eight. So remember, the top is what explicitly you want not the total of everything. So what we want that are not iCarly, there are eight episodes that are not iCarly. So we're picking four episodes. We want to watch four episodes. We want to queue up four episodes, and that's how many we're picking. So our combination for the top is going to be 8C4. Because total eight are not iCarly, that's the goal, and four of those eight we want to pick. Now we do our bottom. That's the total picks, all of the picks. So total, we have a total of 12 episodes, four plus five plus three. We have a total of 12 episodes. We're picking four of those 12 episodes. So for our total possible picks, it's going to be 12C4. So using our formula, we're going to have 8, 8 minus 4, and 4. On the bottom, we're going to have 12, 12 minus 4, and 4.
So on the top, we're left with 70. And on the bottom, we're left with 495. Since we have a 0 and a 5 at the ends, we know that they're divisible by 5. So we're going to divide by 5. 70 divided by 5 is 14. 495 divided by 5 is 99. 99 and 14 have nothing in common. So that's our possible answer, 14 out of 99. Meaning, if you hit shuffle, most likely you're going to watch an iCarly episode. Most likely. It's going to happen. But maybe about a quarter, about a 15% of the time, 14% of the time, you're going to get a no iCarly episode when you hit that shuffle button with four episodes. All right, part B. What's the probability that at least one iCarly episode is selected? I'm going to do part B in mint. So every, everything in part B is going to be the mint color. So didn't we find no iCarly? Keep that in mind. Remember through chapter 11, towards the, the first half of it, it had a formula that if you have a no and at least one, it always equals one? Because they, they both together should equal 100%, aka one. We have the probability of no iCarly. We found that in part A. Part A is no iCarly. So 14 out of 99 times, we're not going to get it. We can solve for the probability of at least one iCarly episode by subtracting 14 over 99. So then what we're left with is the probability of at least one iCarly episode equals 1 minus 14 over 99. Now we need to subtract these. So since the denominator is 99 and that's a 1, it's going to be 99 over 99 minus 14 over 99. And we get 85 over 99. And we can't not simplify that. Can't simplify. So the probability of at least one iCarly is 85 out of 99. That means about 80 to 85% of the time, you're going to watch an iCarly episode. But that makes sense because there's four of them. They're almost most of the episodes are almost iCarly. Part C. What's the probability that two iCarly episodes and two Orville episodes are selected? Let's say like I'm in a real just strict mood. That's what I want to watch. All right, let's do it. So it's still combination because we're not saying I want this episode first, this episode second. No, I just want two and two. I don't care what order they're in. doesn't matter to me. So we want to know the probability of two iCarly's. I'll do IC, and then 2 Orville, so I'll do O. So we have multiple things happening. We have two scenarios, like we have two items we're talking about. So first, for the top, it's still what we want. We still want two iCarly's. And then we still want... Because remember, order doesn't matter. So we're going to be multiplying two Orvilles.
and that's still over the total of all the choices we have. So first, the two iCarly episodes. Let's figure out how we can fit, find that. So we're, we want to pick two episodes. That's what we're trying to do. Two iCarly, two Orville. So two out of four are what we can pick from. So we're picking four. Or is it, we have a total of four to pick from, and we're picking two of them. Remember, the top is exactly just what we want. It's exactly what we want. So it'll be 4C2. Now for our 2 Orville, so total, let's see how many Orville episodes we have. Total, we have 5 Orville episodes, and we're only picking 2 of those. So total, we have 5, and we're picking 2. So it'll be 5C2. And then we're going to divide that by the total of all of them. So all of them, remember, all, every episode we have, we have a total of 12 episodes, and we're picking two of each of these. So total for picking. So for the total of all the D or all the episodes we have are 12 C4. Our total in the bottom never changed. If you if you really paid attention, the bottom never changed because that's every episode we have. The top is what's changing because we want to be specific to only what we care about for the top. So for the top our 4CN for iCarly, what we get from there is 6. So 6, that comes out to 6 combinations. And then we're going to multiply that to the total of Orville. So 5C2, that uh, comes out to 10. And then total of everything, we already know that. It's 495. We already did that. So we do 6 times 10, we get 60 over 495. We can divide these because they they both have 5 in common. Since they both have 5 in common, we can divide by 5. It starts with 0 and, or zero and 5. That's how we know we can divide by 5. So 60 divided by 5, we get 12. Wrong color. Sixty divided by five, we get twelve. Four ninety-five divided by five, we get ninety-nine. Now we can keep simplifying because they have a three in common. Ninety-nine is divisible by three, so we can divide by three. And when we do, we're left with four over thirty-three. So if you want to know the probability, if you have a total of 12 episodes in your queue, but you only want to pick four at random, and you want two to be iCarly, two to be the Orville, it's four out of 33, meaning about 12% of the time that's going to happen. Example four, rare coins. Bray's rare coin collection is made up of eight silver dollars, seven quarters, and five dime. Bray plans to sell eight of his 20 coins to finance his new gaming PC. If they selected the coins at random, what is the probability that three silver dollars, two quarters, and three dimes are selected? So you see how we have multiple things going on? We're talking about silvers, quarters, and dimes. We want to know specific things about them. So we want to know what's the probability of three silver? Two quarters? and three dimes. Now, it doesn't say I want this first, this second, or this third. It doesn't matter. So this is a combination formula. So for our silver, 
So we want to know the probability of three silver, two quarters, and three dimes. So if we set that up, we know this is a combination because, again, order doesn't matter. It's the possibility of all three over the total of all possibilities. So for the silver, for silver, we're picking three. So we're picking three. Remember, picking, that's your R. We're picking three of them. Total, we have eight silver. That's your N. So it'll be 8C3. Now, for the quarters, we're picking two of the quarters out of seven. So that'll be 7C2. And then for our dimes, we're picking three dimes out of five. So that'll be 5C3. If we have multiple categories, we're just going to multiply them all together. So in our numerator, we have C83 times 7C2 times 5C3. So that's our numerator. Now, our denominator, that's the total of everything. So our total, let's figure out how many coins we have. We have 20 coins, and we're picking to sell eight of them. So we set this up. We have 20C8. So that's our total in the bottom. We have 20 coins, and we're picking only eight. So we do our combination formula, uh, 8C3, that equals 56, 7C2, that equals 21, and 5C3, that equals 10. Our denominator comes out to 125,970. It's a really big number because we have 8 out of 20. So we multiply our tops together. We have 11,760 over 125,970. They're both 0, so you can just keep dividing by 10. If they're both 0, you can divide by 10. And you'll be able to actually do it three times. So we can divide by 30. You can just keep dividing by 10 until you can't anymore. And we get 392 over 4199.